Welcome back, everyone. Uh, the next and last bracket for today will be about token ecosystems and the Liechtenstein revolution. And the first speakers will be Konstantinos Dagianis and Andreas Traum, and they'll talk about business models and token ecosystems. The stage is yours. Robert, uh, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for joining today's session on token ecosystems. My name is Andreas Traum. I'm a partner with POVC Consulting, um, where I look after our capital markets industry segment and our business transformation uh, capability. Two topics that I think um, apply quite well when looking at the financial service sector transformation towards digital assets. I started my career implementing Xetra as the uh, first uh, fully electronic and transparent uh, order book for, for the uh, trading of equities. Um, and I'm keen to see how the digital revolution and capital markets will continue um, as we uh, embrace the uh, trading with crypto assets and, and look at the further usage of tokenization. Konstantin and I um, will be kicking off this block today by looking at business models in token ecosystems. The term ecosystem is nowadays being very widely used when talking about digital assets. In this context, we're going to use the term ecosystem uh, to refer to a community of actors um, that are actively shaping relationships to achieve a common goal and in which the token or the digital asset is going to serve as the unit of value within that ecosystem. At PwC, we strive to support various actors in these ecosystems, looking at both the agile new players, as well as looking at traditional players and helping them find their place in the changing ecosystem. We have a global crypto center of excellence where we are over 250 crypto experts covering topics from assurance, tax and legal, as well as advisory. And we really work together globally uh, to serve our clients. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining as well from my side. My name is Konstantin, and I'm a technology assurance partner in the financial services practice at PwC. I deal with new technologies and how to use new technologies in financial services industry in a risk-oriented and a compliant way. That's why I'm consulting financial institutions with cryptocurrencies and how they can address risk of the, the risk appropriately and be compliant to the continuous changing regulatory requirements. I look forward to be talking to Andreas about the challenges arise from financial institutions and in the crypto space. So today, what we prepared, I wanted to look in a kind of pre-flight checklist for financial institutions of what to consider when looking at establishing a token-based business model. So Andreas, I think everybody is ready to take off. Let's start. Can you give us a brief overview of the common business models in the crypto space? Indeed, uh, Konstantin, and I think ready for takeoff uh, is a very good catchphrase. And you know, it's been a it's been a very good and full first day. Uh, let's so let's see if we can keep this uh, you know entertaining for you guys. Well, when looking at the uh, you know digital ecosystems, we're looking at a wide range of business models. Um, and, and we've seen, and I think uh, that, that's been mentioned by a couple of speakers today, we've seen a vast push into crypto business over the past year. Looking at current developments, and especially we're looking at you know, the role that fin traditional financial institutions are playing, and we can, we can group business models along the value chain, which I think is a good you know, differentiator to be looking at, at what type of business model and, and strategy that you want to embrace. Now, for one, we have obviously issuance. This includes the classical you know, ICO as a form of raising money often used by startups. Um, and, and here, you know, I look at ICOs and I say classic um, because we've actually seen the, the volumes declining um, since 2019. And instead, we're seeing a trend towards you know, more security token offerings as you know, fundraising in the, in the um, fintech and, and startup uh, space. Um, and of course, there's a, there's a yearly um, study that we do on the ICO and STO trends that's, that's really available for you guys. Next, um, looking at trading. Um, and so I think the last year uh, and, and, and 2021, um, as it continues, has seen a you know, massive increase in trading volumes of cryptocurrencies, um, fueled by the staggering volatility of, uh, of Bitcoin uh, and, and its associates. 
right? So, you know, we have a variety of uh, bilateral trading apps. Uh, in the previous uh, panel, I listened to Max talk about, uh, you know, the BS Dex as, as one of the um, fully regulated uh, exchanges. Um, so we have, you know, the bilateral trading apps, we have regulated crypto exchanges, and we also have a uh, um, array of hugely successful neo brokers um, that uh, have been stealing the business in the traditional, you know, uh, stock brokerage, and they're also entering the crypto trading space. Um, going along the value chain, let's look at asset management, um, where we saw the first large scale funds um, that started to include crypto assets uh, enter the market last year. Um, this is going to continue, and uh, with the evolution of the Digital Securities Act, the uh, uh, EVET Papier Gesetz, um, we uh, expect that to, to cover fund shares uh, that can be directly uh, issued on the blockchain pretty soon in, in its next iteration. Um, I think we'll see a major disruption in that market continue, and especially uh, any transfer agent based markets is going to see uh, potentially a, a vast uh, change. Like, uh, next, and just briefly summarizing, you know, custody and the safekeeping of digital assets is an increasingly important facet of digital business models um, with fintechs and large multinational banks, you know, both entering the market of ensuring the safety and the secure movement of digital assets of, of all types. Um, and that's, um, again, looking at the uh, you know, new regulations I think that's going to be um, become very important uh, to make sure that those digital assets are actually safe, um, and a lot of focus is on that. Um, lastly, just to round it off, um, I would mention the the whole realm of um, you know platform based business models. Also, a, a hype word everybody's talking about: platform based ecosystems. Um, and we're going to see much more of that and how they leverage tokens. Uh, as a means of facilitating uh, the economic flows, you know, ranging from financing and sale of real estate projects to the tokenization of leasing and paper use of industrial facilities. That sounds very interesting. What kind of strategy do you recommend for businesses which are interested in getting into crypto space? I mean, that, that's a very important question, actually, um, that both the you know, established players as well as the, you know, the, the new kids on the block, the fintech, should be asking themselves. Um, and also where we see a lot of uncertainty in the ecosystem and, and uh, as consultants, we have uh, you know, a lot of discussions with people who are struggling around that. Um, some fear that they're just you know, late to the game and, and, and just struggle um, in a kind of me too uh, fashion to to uh, to enter that space as well. Um, no matter where you are, you know, along your token voyage, it is important to understand, you know, where you want to see yourself in an evolving ecosystem, and look at where you have that right to play. I mean, and it's equally important to get a firm view of what you don't want to do in this space. Um, when kicking off uh, this little speech, um, talked about an ecosystem being a community of actors, ideally working together to achieve a common goal and to use tokens to select their business. For companies looking to enter the uh, token ecosystem, that's a key aspect to keep in mind. I mean, how do you plan to interact with others? Where do you add value? And what do you see as your core strength? As an example, just looking at the trading of cryptocurrencies, um, the market has been established by you know, the big players like Coinbase, Kraken, uh, Sex.io, and, and, and the likes of these. Traditional brokerages are now struggling to catch up, and uh, and they, and we've had lots of discussions, need to ask themselves whether to build up their own infrastructure or to partner with existing players. When looking at institutional um, business, it's a whole other story altogether, right? Um, here we see you know, the corporate investment banks um, and asset managers at various stages of uh, incorporating digital assets into their business. As a, as a starting point, Again, I, I will mention look at the value chain and systematically ask yourself, what are the opportunities and obstacles when you look at your existing business and you stop, substitute crypto assets or tokens in place of traditional products? Um, and you know, ecosystems of wide range. So again, lastly, when we look at token or platform-based business models, 
um, again, um, I think key is to look at the purpose of, of that token um, within your end-to-end -end value chain. Um, you know, what, ex what, what advantages do you expect tokens and smart contracts to add to your business and how can you fully leverage it? And what we're still seeing is that, you know, when we're looking at, for example, payment ecosystems that are in the digital asset world, um, do you have that breakpoint? Do you need a gateway into fiat payment settlements? And I think uh, that's that's a whole realm where introduction of a CBDC um, will be a great light lever to further streamline uh, processes. Now, once and that was you know very short run through it, but once you have a clear understanding of your strategy, um, there are also a lot of ramifications to consider. For example, um, you know, there's there's you know all type of risk to consider, Constantine. Um, what aspects of, for example, technology risk uh, do you see as important? Andreas, that's true. There are a lot of risks which we have, be, we have to address. Let's start with the technology. Manipulating the blockchain transaction is very costly. That means it's very unlikely that transaction will be manipulated. The risk with the crypto asset is not the transaction themselves, but it's the key needed to complete the transaction. A private key defines ownership of a crypto asset. If a private key is stolen, made available to third party, altered, or a private key is lost, it means that the control over access of the crypto asset is lost. Securing the generation, storage, use of the private keys plays an essential role in securing the crypto assets. Various aspects must be taken into account when securing the keys. The range from an authorization management, a change management, operations of the IT systems or IT infrastructure used to store and backup, of course, the keys. For example, it must be ensured that no one who is not the owner of the crypto asset has access to the key or the backup of the key information. After all, what would happen? If, for example, Andreas obtained the key information from me, he could use my key to transfer my crypto assets to his wallet and I would no longer be the owner of the crypto assets. There are also specifics to consider when dealing with crypto assets in terms of data protection. Now you're probably wondering why. After all, no personal data is required for a transaction. And that is also true, but for example, by tracing the IP address from which the transaction was carried out, or if the crypto assets are used to purchase products or services, links of the transactions with personal data could be made. The transaction data itself is anonymous, but visible to all participants. If a participant, for example, an online merchant, now obtains a personal data such as buyer names and address in, in the course of the purchase, he can link it to, to the transaction, and he can then use this information to link further transactions, also gain further information. So as you see, even when dealing with crypto assets, measures have to be taken into the environment of the IT systems and IT infrastructure to ensure information and IT security, as well as data protection. Some of these will be measures that you already have in place, but there will be new measures as well. But Andreas, we talked about technology and risks now. Let's talk about people. How can I be sure I have the right talent on board to manage such a complex new business area? Right, uh, people are important aspects. Um, and uh, one of the key challenges that, that we see for the capital market space as a whole, so not just looking at digital assets, is, uh, is the war for talent. Um, when looking at token ecosystems, I think this is even more true, especially for traditional financial institutions. It's not just a staffing question, you know, how to staff those projects to, 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 uh, uh, to offer digital assets. Um, but it's often a generation gap that, that needs to be addressed and needs to be closed. Um, when comparing digital ecosystems to you know, linear type of supply chains, uh, we're talking about a paradigm shift. And I think very important when it comes to, to people and, and the people who drive uh, this transformation, um, it's uh, important for banks to adopt an ecosystem-based mindset. We often see a very different understanding of you know, work location in the crypto generation. And I've seen teams that with experts that sit wherever they choose around the globe, and ideally you know, working hours as, as they please. Um, 
having a more old school background myself, I can understand the struggles when trying to combine, you know, this new mindset that the crypto talents have with the org structure and, and the way that, that a more traditional financial institution actually works. We talked about the journey to uh, um, digital assets and, and tokens um, to be a transformation for the financial services industry. And in the end, it's people that make a transformation successful. So that is a key component to consider. Now, there are many vendors that offer issuance on the blockchain or the safekeeping of assets. Um, but you need to ensure as an organization that you have the right people on board that understand digital assets and also pay special attention to not leaving behind uh, the workspace that you already have on board. Um, that's looking at people, right? Now, Constantine clients often ask about, you know, special considerations concerning risk management and how to adopt that for digital assets. What are some key points for you that come to mind? Yeah, let's go a little bit deeper into risk management. So the regulatory requirements for risk management make it clear in the context appropriate risk management requires a clear view of the relevant issues. Transparency is required and must be created in order to be able to manage and monitor risk appropriately. That's why MRS, the banking regulation, has provided for implementation of a new product process. Institutions should first examine in the sufficient detailed way whether they can adequately manage or monitor the risk resulting from a new product or a new business activity with their existing instruments. IT-related and process-related enhancements may be required before new business activities can be launched. So this structured NPP process is also mandatory when starting business activities in context of crypto assets, of course. And here, business activities must be screened from end to end. Let's start with an example. Before entering into trades into crypto assets, yes, you heard right, the acquisition of a crypto asset represents a trading transaction in the sense of MRS. The supervisory authority formulates detailed requirements on how trading transactions have to be processed. So on the one hand, question regarding to the separation of functions, who carries out the trading transaction, who is responsible for the settlement and the valuation. On the other hand, in addition to organizational structures, numerous questions arise with regards to process organization. Now, we have already heard that there are different forms of crypto asset, like Andreas already described. Depending on the respective product and business model, it must therefore be examined how the requirements can be implemented. The requirements that the super supervisory authority places in the risk controlling are extensive as well. So another type is, of course, operational risk. I've already touched base on technology risk, but there are many more operational risks uh, have to be covered. But let's leave risk management. It's a super complex topic for such a short amount of time. And I want to take a look at the regulations. So I give you some insights on that. There have been published a number of papers. However, still many clearings because of the supervision vision so far only deals with the classification of a crypto asset. So far, only Basel, the Basel Committee has issued the BCBS 490, which deals more comprehensively with the regulatory treatment of crypto assets. The BCBS has tried to fill the gaps in the regulatory forest, but with the papers and the provide principles that banks should follow when getting into crypto space. We are still at the beginning of the regulation and the regulatory treatment of the crypto asset has been yet not fully clarified. So that's a very, very, tricky space. Of course, there is a one large topic in the regulation and the laws, the Anti-Money Laundering Act, um, that, that when you do business in the crypto area, you have to address all the anti-money laundering stuff. So what is clear in a case, there are many questions that need to be answered before you can start doing business in the crypto assets on a large scale from technology, risk management, regulatory, people strategy, AML, and many more. We're happy to guide you through that, through the preparation. Basically, that's it from us. We really, that's a really brief pre-flight overview for cryptocurrency business and the compliance behind it. Thank you very much for tuning in and have fun with the rest of the crypto asset conference. Thank you. Thank you too for, for the interesting format and, uh... Yeah, the interesting content as well.